call this meeting to order and welcome you to this special town meeting. The uh, chair has uh, been informed that the meeting is duly posted. The warrant, I should say, has been duly posted, so we will dispense with the formal reading of the warrant, and the chair will recognize the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Matt Furlong, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and I ask you to stand. Thank you. Uh, the tellers have been sworn in. We have several new tellers, which we uh, welcome to the meeting. And they all know their appointed areas. We have a visitor section in the back there. Uh, you're welcome to sit there, even if you're a registered voter. However, if you are a registered voter, you won't be counted if we have a standing count if you're sitting in the visitor section. The chair has been informed that we do have several visitors that um, will be uh, requested uh, or be asked to speak at this meeting and they are students of Pembroke High School on the bag article and that's subject to meeting approval and when we get to that article uh, that motion will be made. The, uh, oh, the chair wants to make sure that everybody has copies of the warrant so if you don't have copies of the warrant uh, to follow along uh, please raise your hand and the tellers will make sure that you have them uh, quickly because we do want to get going. Uh, just quickly to go over the ground rules, uh, we ask that you speak at the microphone uh, and state your name and your street. You may think everybody knows who you are, um, and they may, but the chair once in a while does not remember names, or you may say something pithy that some reporter may want to quote you on, so they may want to know your name, or is there feedback, or is it just me? We okay? Uh, or the clerk may need your name if you're going to make a procedural motion. So even if you're a regular, I just ask that you state your name and your street for identification purposes. Uh, I will recognize people, or try to recognize people in the order in which they've appeared. We'll go from one side to another. I'll give preference uh, to those who have not previously spoken. If you are having trouble reaching the microphone for any reason, just raise your hand and we'll get, I think the mics are all wireless, so we'll get a microphone to you. But otherwise, I just ask that you stand at the microphone if you wish to uh, speak. The only exception to that is if you wish to make a point of order, and a chair is very liberal in accepting points of order. It can be, Mr. Moderator, I can't hear, I don't understand what's going on. We don't want anyone not to know what's going on. Uh, you may have some other further point of order. Um, you can just jump up from your chair and yell out as loud as you can, Mr. Moderator, point of order, and I'll recognize you from your chair. Otherwise, I won't. If you wish to move a question, which is, would end debate, that's most times in order. Not can't be the first one up and move to move the question, but if a significant time as period has lapsed and you make the motion to move the question, which ends debate, I will not accept it from the chair, you have to go to the microphone and be recognized in due order. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, just want to remind you that uh, Carol Dodge is selling treats, caffeine, and sugar for the benefit of the Key Club as she has for many years. And also a small group of Pembroke residents love putting on fun family community events. Their next event is the Pembroke Tree Lighting set for Sunday, December 2nd. From three to six, roasting marshmallows over fire pits, cookie decorating, live nativity, and more. Santa comes flying in at five o'clock to light the lights, and then Pembroke High School Choir will be singing under the newly lit trees. The group is also accepting donations for next year's Pembroke Celebrates with Fireworks. You can drop off donations at Real Estate Rocks on Route 36, payable to Pembroke Celebrates, or go on to Facebook Pembroke Celebrates page. And before we get into the business, the chair would just like to take one moment to recognize Town Clerk Peg Struzik, uh, who will inform us that we can vote anytime this week and on weekends, on this coming weekend. Can you hear me? No. Let me just... Thank you. Early voting started Monday. Um, everyone who votes in the town of Pembroke votes early voting in town hall. 
Um, it's going to run through November 2nd. We'll be open every Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. And we're also open this Saturday, 9 to 3. If you're voting on Election Day, the polls will open at 7 and close at 8. If you, um, are you, if you or someone you know has, can't make it to either one of the open sessions, we're sti we still have availability for absentee ballots. Just remember that the post office is projecting a 10 to 12 day turnaround time on them and they need to be in day of election. Thank you. Oh, and I'd like to introduce you to Andrea. Andrea McKetrick is the new assistant town clerk. Thank you. Welcome, Andrea. <laughs> One further procedural item. Uh, you will notice that there are several, actually more than several, motions that will require a two-thirds by statute, by state law. Most likely those are borrowing. So in order to save time, in order to avoid having to do a standing vote to count to two-thirds every time it's necessary, uh, we routinely ask, actually every meeting we ask, the chair asks for your permission to give the moderator authority to declare a two-thirds. And uh, if it's at all close, like in any uh, hand vote, uh, we'll go to a standing vote. So Arthur Boyle moves that if a two-thirds vote is required by statute, the moderator is authorized to declare a two-thirds vote if, after a show of hands, the moderator determines that the two-thirds majority has been reached. Provided, however, that if a vote so declared is immediately questioned by seven or more voters, the moderator shall verify the two-thirds majority by ordering a standing count of the yeas and nays. Is there a second? second. Chair here, second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And we are ready to begin. For those who are new to the meeting, we've used the high-tech lottery box here. And the chair has also um, been informed that there are several articles, namely 1, 2, 13, and 14, that are all financial related. They're kind of like pieces of the puzzle that all have to be done at some point. So when we get to one of those articles, I'll accept a motion to take them out of order. So it would be 1, 2, 13, and 14. That's your decision. It takes a four-fifths vote. Uh, and also, Article 4 is contingent upon the actions of, our, of those other articles. So if we come to Article 4, we will postpone it. Well, I'll entertain a motion. Again, it's your decision to postpone action on Article 4 till after those other articles have been disposed of. Uh, advisory and Board of Selectmen advise that that will make it a little easier for them as they're calculating. The first item of business is Article 6. Article 6 is, on, 6 is on page 3 of your warrant, and the chair recognizes Stephen Walsh from advisory. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Move that the town vote to create a water department stabilization fund pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40, subsection 5B, to be used for the purpose of major capital purchases in the water department. Second. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this item requires a two-thirds vote, so we'll do it by a show of hands. All those in favor of the motion by Stephen Walsh, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it unanimous. Next item of business is Article 12. Article 12 on page 5, the chair recognizes once again Stephen Walsh from Advisory Committee. Thank you. Move that the town vote to accept the provisions of Chapter 59, Sections 21A of Mass General Laws, which authorizes compensation of up to $1,000 annually for the chief assessor who has completed the necessary courses of study and has been awarded a certificate by the International Association of Assessing Offices and or the Association of Massachusetts Assessors. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Stephen Walsh just requires a majority, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it and I declare it so voted. Article 5. Page two, the chair recognizes Stephen Curley, vice chair of the... Chair. 
Oh, you're chair now. Congratulations. <laughs> Chairman, once again, of the advisory committee. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to supplement each prior vote of the town that authorizes the borrowing of money to pay costs of capital projects to provide that in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 20, the premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes thereunder, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to pay project costs and the amount authorized to be borrowed for each such project shall be reduced by the amount of any such premium so applied. Mo motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, this appears to be fairly routine. All those in favor of the motion by Stephen Curley, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 16. Article 16, and we routinely have these articles at every town meeting, uh, will, you'll see in the warrant has A through H, that's what, seven or eight different recommendations. We will treat each one of them separately. Um, and Lisa Culley is the chair of the Community Preservation Correct, Committee, and the chair recognizes Lisa Culley for recommendation A on Article 16. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Just for those that, that aren't familiar with CPC, because there seems to be a little confusion, CPC money is a separate tax line item that is matched by the state. It does not come out of your general fund. The money spent by CPC or not spent by CPC does not affect the rest of the budget. So just to dispel that notion. The other thing that seems to be a little bit confusing is when CPC brings forth an article to town meeting floor that that's somehow a recommendation of CPC to fund the article. CPC is charged with making sure the article is appropriate and can be funded legally out of CPC and the funds are there to do so. It is up to you, the taxpayers, to decide whether or not you want your tax CPC funding spent on these articles. So if you're, with your permission, Mr. Moderator, I'll move on. Chair recognizes Lisa Colony. Um, recommendation A, move that the sum of $10,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation FY19 open space funds, that said funds be used by Pembroke Department of Public Works for the preservation of open space by installing a guardrail at the Herring Run Park. Second. Motions are made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. <coughs> all those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Recommendation B, the chair recognizes Lisa Colley. Yes, at this time we're going to move to take no action on recommendation B. We do expect to see this article return with more information and probably a request for more funding. Is there a second? second. Chair has second. The chair would just advise that the motion to take no action is uh, always in order. We try to reserve it for articles where everyone is in agreement that for one reason or another uh, this article should not move forward. Uh, on the motion by Lisa Cully, take no action on recommendation B. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Recommendation C, the chair recognizes Lisa Cully. Move that the sum of $12,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation FY19 open spaced funds. That said funds be used by the town administrator for funding a study and engineering costs for making the facilities at Town Landing, Wampatuck Street compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. <laughs> Recommendation D, the chair recognizes Lisa Cully. Move that the sum of $10,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation FY19 annual revenues and that said funds be used by the Cobb Library trustees for the purpose of rehabilitating and restoring historic resource by installation of new light fixtures, carpentry, painting, and outdoor hanging sign. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Recommendation E, the chair recognizes Lisa Cully. Move that the sum of $25,000 be appropriated from Community Preservation FY19 open space funds that said funds be used by Conservation <coughs> Commission for the creation and preservation of open space by the execution of conservation restriction and signage at 190 Barker Street. 
Is there a second? Yeah, Parker. Sorry. Is there a second? Recognize. Chair is second. Any discussion? Question. Chair recognizes Doc Yacobucci. You, know, you have to use the microphone so they can hear you at home. How much land are we purchasing here? Chair We've already purchased it, Doc. Okay. Chair recognizes Lisa Colony. How much is it? This, this is strictly for signage. The land is already the property of the town of Pembroke. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the, re of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Recommendation F, the chair recognizes Lisa Colony. That the sum, move that the sum of $7,500 be appropriated from the Community Preservation FY19 historic funds, and that said funds be used by Pembroke Historical Society for the restoration of a historic resource, the Pembroke Historical Society's building's ceiling. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Recommendation G, the chair recognizes Lisa Colody. Move that the sum of $20,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation FY19 annual revenues, and that said funds be used by the Pembroke Historical District Commission for the purpose of preserving historic resources by conducting an archaeological survey of the property at 369 Washington Street. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. Just state your name. Uh, my name is Steve Herman. I'm a member of the Historic District Commission. Chair recognizes Steve Herman. Um, just a quick, quick uh, try to make this quick. The Turner House is at 369 Washington Street. It's at the intersection of 14 and 53. Um, this is a, a historic building um, by virtue of the fact that it was the home of John Turner, who was the, um, the head of Selectman uh, in um, 1772. And that um, 1772, the town of Pembroke uh, wrote the Pembroke Resolves, which is the first written protest against British rule in the colonies. Um, the house is on the property that's, that was purchased by the town uh, for the purpose of um, a uh, firehouse police, uh, police station. And the Turner House is right behind that, that proposed site. Um, the uh, University of Massachusetts Boston Archaeological uh, Department has been working for three years in Plymouth on, um, on the hill in Plymouth, uh, excavating some of the grave sites there for historic purposes. And they are looking for a project, and they, they became interested in the Turner House. Given the fact that, the, that, it's, that a public safety building will go at that site eventually, we'd like the Historical Commission would like to know exactly what's there. The Turner House uh, and its um, environs has been the site of uh, intense commercial activity since the 1640s, and we're not really sure what's there. We'd like to find out where the outbuildings are and so forth. And so um, basically what's going to happen is that that department is going to bring their graduate students down. They're going to a dig. They're going to do, they're going to research historic documents. Um, they're going to sort of grid pattern the whole area so we can find out what property would be best to ask the town for to set aside for the, um, for the protection of, the, of the, the John Turner House. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? On the motion by Lisa Culley, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Uh, recommendation H, the chair recognizes Lisa Culley. Move that the sum of $20,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation FY19 annual revenues and that said funds be used by the town administrator for the purchase and installation of a handicapped entrance ramp and the associated construction and accommodations at the GAR Hall. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 11. On page five of the warrant, and the chair recognizes the chairman of advisory, Steve Curley. 
Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriate, uh, sorry, I, I move take no action on Article 11. Is there a second? Second. Chair has second. Any discussion? Again, your call on whether we take no action or not. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 19. On page 8, <clears throat> and the chair recognizes Linda Peterson, former chair yeah. of advisory committee. Mr. Moderator. Move to transfer the care, custody, management, and control of a parcel of land identified on Assessor's Map F9 as Particle 1, consisting of 18.12 acres, more or less, and located off the east side of Washington Street, the north side of Edgewater Drive, and the west side of Miramar Drive, from the school department for school purposes to the Board of Selectmen for general municipal purposes and or the purpose of conveyance and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to convey such said parcel on such terms and conditions and for such consideration as the Selectmen deem appropriate. Second. This is an item that requires a two-thirds vote. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds needed for passage. Article 8. On page 3, and the chair recognizes Maria Karras from the advisory. Mr. Chairman, I move to take no action on Article 8. Second. Motion has been made. Obviously, the decision or the recommendation is not to move forward on this. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Oppose no. Caught you off guard. The ayes have it. <laughs> by the way, the town bylaw requires that in the first instance every vote be taken by a show of hands, which is why we kind of revert to that normally, although the chair sometimes cheats on occasion. But technically we are supposed to do a show of hands, uh, which is why we do it that way. Uh, Article 15 is the next item of business. And the chair recognizes Eric Hunt from the Recreation Commission. Hurt. Eric Hurt. I'm sorry, Hurt, Hurt. Yep. <laughs> Can't read my writing. I move that uh, 20892 be appropriated from free cash and transfer to community center custodial wages and salaries. Is there a second? Chair, motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Moderator. Chair recognizes Steve Curley. Uh, Mr. Moderator, um, this is a uh, financial one. I, I think that we would have preferred that this one came up after the other ones. Uh, as, as is, we don't have the money for this based on what we're recommending, but that could even get worse uh, if we vote some of the other things. Uh, we, we do not have this money. Um, and you know, right now, the free cash is dwindling very rapidly. Mr. Moderate, I move that we postpone this to the last item of the meeting. Is there a second? second. Motions and made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion to postpone to the last item of business? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and Article 15 will be postponed until the last item of business. Article 13. So the motion has, um, again, as the chair stated at the beginning, that uh, advisor and the Board of Selectmen uh, wish to take these items together and do it in the order of Article 1, 
2, 13, and 14. So Mr. Tobin moves that Article 13 be taken up, that Article 1 be taken up out of order, followed by Article 2, Article 13, and Article 14. That requires a four-fifths vote. Um, so all those in favor of the mo is, is it been, uh, motions have made, has it been seconded? Second. Chair has a second. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to take Article 1, 2, 13, 14 together, and we'll take Article 1 up right away, uh, please raise your hand. No. Uh, I'm sorry. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. 13, 14. 14. So uh, Article 1 will be the next item of business. Chair recognizes the newest member of the advisory committee, former longtime chairman of the Recreation Commission. Happy to see him on the advisory committee, Matthew Norton, uh, for purposes of making a motion in Article 1. Move that the town appropriate and transfer from pre cash the sum of $451,454 for the purpose of balancing the budget and reducing the tax rate for the fiscal year, fiscal year 2019. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Next item of business will be Article 2. Chair recognizes Maria. Maria Karras from advisory. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that the town appropriate and transfer from free cash the sum of uh, 185478 for the purpose of balancing the budget and reducing the tax rate for the fiscal year 2019. Second. Motions are made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. So Article 13 will now be the next item of business. And the chair recognizes Matt Furlong from advisory, uh, from the Board of Selectmen, sorry. Oh, I don't think it's on. Uh. All right. We move that $160,192 be appropriated from free cash and transferred to police department wages and salaries overtime. Second. Motions made and seconded. The chair recognizes Chief Rick Wall. Good evening. I'm sorry if I have my back to some of you. Um, this is a process that we've been trying to fix for a long time. It has to do with manpower on the road. Um, Town of Pembroke does fairly well as, as a result of the police officers. Our crime rate is down. Uh, I think they've been very, our officers are very supportive of the town, and I'm hoping that the town will be supportive of the officers. This overtime request is, is I've gone to, to town meeting, I've gone to budget hearings, uh, trying to raise the level of police officers to a minimum of four officers on the road for a 24 square mile town with 20,000 people. Four police officers on the road. I have yet to get there. Tomorrow I celebrate my sixth anniversary as chief and when I took over we had 24 police officers. We, we were down to bare bones, we were running three, three officers on the road, we were forcing overtime because we weren't able to fill we, in, in with trying to stay within budgets. We've been building that back up over the last six years, but we're not there yet. We still run shifts with three officers on the road. After the tragedy in Weymouth, and then followed up by a shooting in Falmouth, I couldn't let the officers be out there with three cars on the road. I mean, we were on a north car and a south car and a sergeant in the middle. And the odds that he's needed in the other area is 50%. And they do a lot of work out there. They answer a lot of calls. And now we're dealing with a population of people that want to challenge police officers. There was a shooting yesterday in South Carolina. Uh, we can't do this anymore. It's time. This is a crisis for this town. We need to step up and we need to fund this. So this overtime request, back in August, I, I raised my minimum level to four. So I'm spending money that we don't have or we do have, but uh, 
I had to do that. That's my job. I have to take care of these offices. You have the best group of men and women ever assembled in this police department. So, excuse me, we need to fund this. And the second part of this is we need to fund the two police officers to go to the academy in February so that this overtime doesn't have to continue year after year. We need to have the actual manpower. This is what I asked for last year. And you supported the, uh, the, the manpower request at town meeting. So I have authorization to hire people. We just didn't have a funding source. So this isn't something new. And I realize this is a, you know, it should be a capital meeting. It's in the fall. But, you know, I, I can't pick the time of crisis. And I've tried every legitimate avenue to get these people hired. The need is now. So I'm asking you to support this. Thank you. Chair recognizes town accountant Mike Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I am um, very much against this. We have $600,000 in one-time money already built into the budget. Uh, this article and the next article ask for that number to be increased by $260,000. Um, that's an estimate, by the way. I'll get to this later, but uh, that's the estimate of what needs to be added. Um, and I want to be clear, if this article passes, I'm recommending that almost everything in Article 4 not be passed. There's only so much money to go around. The town's budget is finite. Um, if it, we give money, especially one-time money for recurring expenses to one department, it has to come from somewhere else. Last May, as the chief said, the department asked, the police department asked for $200,000. The town couldn't afford it then, so it became part of the override. And unfortunately, the residents of the town didn't support the override, didn't support the police department, and voted it down. Now the police department is asking for $237,000, and they're asking to use one-time money. I understand what the chief is doing. He's doing his job, and I respect that. But what I don't understand is that the Board of Selectmen and the Advisory Committee are endorsing this. The town's budget, as I said, is a finite amount. To give to one department means taking away from the others. But the Advisory Committee and the Selectmen don't have a plan. The only plan that I have heard from either of those committees is that, quote, we'll hope for the best and we'll figure something out later. That's not how you run a town. I told the board that we needed to save $500,000 in free cash for next year's budget because we have $500,000 in free cash in this year's budget. And once you do that, you have to do that forever until the state comes through, comes through with a big windfall or there's some big development that comes in. But the, none of those things are on the radar between now and July 1st. They didn't like my answer. So they hired the Collins Institute from the University of Massachusetts. Collins Center gave them the same answer. They also said, next year, the year beginning July 1st, we're facing a deficit of a million two. So naturally, I'm against this as printed in the warrant. Not because I don't respect what the chief is trying to do, but because I have a very strong feeling, very strong conviction that if we keep do, putting one-time money into the budget, it's not going to be four guys on the road. It's going to be two guys on the road, and it's going to be even more dangerous. So we'll get eight months of better public service, better public safety, and then in July, we'll revert back to a worse place than we were before. But I'm also against this for another reason. If you look carefully at the descriptions in Article 13 and Article 14, you'll see that, and you know, I'll give the chief credit, he spells it out. For the two guys, it's $77,000, I think. Well, that's four. That doesn't include any benefits. That only includes seven or eight months of salary. Twelve months of salary is almost twice that. And as the chief said, he has changed his staffing. That is costing an extra $8,000 a week. Anybody can take $8,000 
multiply that times 52, and find out the real number isn't $177,000, it's $400,000. So that's what's being asked of you tonight, really $480,000. So for those reasons, I'm against this. No one has a plan other than just using one-time money that won't be there in July, and uh, I can't support it. Thank you. Chair recognizes Steve Curley from advisory. Uh, Mr. Moderator, um, the advisory committee did last night vote in favor of recommending this, but we also asked our secretary to send a letter asking the selectmen to uh, have a joint meeting and so that we can start looking at next year's budget because we're going to have to be cutting about a half a million dollars from other budgets if all of these things go through. Uh, we have to try and get this under control. Uh, the professor that was referenced uh, from the Collins Institute in terms of the habit of using uh, free cash to pay salaries referenced another town that for, I believe for the past 10 years has been under state receivership. And um, if we continue to just spend uh, free cash on salaries, uh, at some point the credit card's gonna come due and we're probably gonna be in receivership and I think that uh, we're looking for the Board of Selectmen to show some uh, leadership on this, and we're trying to show some leadership and trying to get together and start trying to proactively cut some of these department budgets because we, we need a half a million dollars uh, next year, and it's, and it's going quickly, this meeting. Chair recognizes Chief Wall. I'm going to disagree with uh, Mike Buckley, the accountant, on the numbers. Um, that does include the health insurance, that's two employees for January to uh, July. And then at the end of that, the overtime is going to be drastically reduced because I'm going to have offices filling those spots and I don't have to fill them with overtime. So, you know, I, I factored in the numbers and everything else, did the best I could with it. I think they're accurate. And, and again, I don't think that we need to make, you know, if we have a problem with, with the finances and everything else, don't let the town's police department balance that out. We have a job to do. I can't cut down the number of calls. I can't close two days a week because you're only going to you know, fund five-sevenths of a budget. I don't have that option. What I do have is I have a duty to protect the officers that are out there into the public. That's what I need to do. Now, we've bounced this around. This, this plan isn't something new. This is something I've been talking about since, since six years ago, since my first budget because this is where it needs to be. And we're getting back to where we were in 1988 when, when uh, Ted Kane and Dave Hurley came on as offices 31 and 32. So it, it's not like we're, we're trying to you know, increase. We're trying to get back to where we were, at least have a, you know, a safe opportunity to do our jobs. That's all we're looking for. Chair recognizes, if you could say your name. Stephanie Skolnick, Captain Stephanie. Tory Lane. Stephanie. Um, I have a question for the chief. If we vote favorably for Article 14 to fund the two new officers, is Article 13 needed anymore for the overtime? Chair recognizes Chief Wall. The next available academy is February. It takes six months to train a police officer, so yes. If we had had this funded last year, I wouldn't be looking for the overtime. We would have had the officers. So, you know, when you, when you push this down the road, it's going to end up costing you more money. And, and that's what's happened here. So, no, that overtime I'm going to need to carry through until the end of the year, until the officers graduate from the academy and I can put them on the road to fill those spots. Any further discussion? Chair recognizes Mike Buckley. Just one more item quickly. I stand by my numbers. In the 14 weeks of the fiscal year since July 1st, the department has spent $120,000 more um, than it should have for we're sticking to a 152nd budget, so I stand by my numbers. Chair recognizes former school committee member Carol Dodge. I heard Mrs. Skolnick say Captain Tory Lane, and it came into my memory that that street is behind my house. And in 1991, Mike Siegfried, God rest his soul, our former conservation agent, stood on town meeting floor and said, we conservation have decided that there's two parcels of land in Pembroke that are no longer wetlands, but land that is wet. And Captain Tory and Grist Mill were built. And we, the school committee, did the budget in April 
and I had a whole class of kindergartners in September because of the growth near my home. Not only Gris Mill and Captain Tory, but since then, we have Anthony Way, we have Summers Path, we have Millberry Lane, but we haven't hired an officer. I'm only speaking about my street, West Elm Street, never mind the other 25 square miles of town. We cannot, the police department cannot do the job. It is not safe. I'm not a budget person. I respectfully ask you to fund this. Thank you. Chair recognizes <laughs> school, committee, school committee member Patrick Chilcott. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I want to tell me to know, well, first of all, a couple of things. What the chief is doing is he's coming here is a, a last resort. Look, he needs, the, he needs the guys. There's no question, at least in my mind as a resident, he needs the guys. Um, you know, we're at the point where with growth, with public safety, with everything else, he's come back to us now three or four times and asked for two additional guys over and over again. The issue and that where, where we're struggling in the school committee did send a memo to the Board of Selectmen, the Town of Counton, and the Town Administrator isn't about the need, it's about the funding source. The concern in using free cash to fund the position is that we're exacerbating what is likely going to be a $2 million deficit next year. Now that's a problem, but the chief shouldn't have to deal with the problem unilaterally and individually. So I guess what I'm asking and what I'd ask the selectmen is from a priority perspective, because this comes down to a financial and economic priority, is there a way that we, because I think most of us would like to vote in favor of these two new positions, is there a way that we can go back and craft a budget to figure out in this budget cycle from a fiscal priority uh, you know, lens to be able to, to come up with the money to fund this within the, the confines of the budget and not use free cash? Because one-time money is just going to mean, instead of $2 million, it's $2.2 .2 million next year. Chair recognizes Steve Curley. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, through you to the prior speaker, one, one of the difficulties we have is uh, in the current year's budget, as it was voted in the spring, 12.29% uh, went to public safety, 53.9% went to the uh, schools, and 22.06% went to benefits and insurance. And um, so between those is 88% of the budget. Um, you know, the, the general government is 3%. Um, the, the public works is only 2.5%. Uh, you know, health and sanitation is less than a percent. You know, and most of these things are... Um, they're required positions. You, you have to have a town clerk, you have to have a town collector, you have to have a town accountant. Um, you know, there's, there's things you just can't get rid of these departments. And short of getting rid of other departments, you've got 88% right there. There's like nothing left outside of there to cut. Chair recognizes Mike. Michael Damon. Michael Damon, point, right? sorry. Um, in pre preparation for the meeting today, and I support the chief, first of all, and, and this isn't against any other department and definitely not against the schools. I had uh, three boys go through the school system. I love the school system. But in the last five years, um, attendance in the schools have dropped 13%, 435 students. Right now, again, this was the 17-18 um, uh, uh, numbers. We had 268 seniors and with 168 first graders. So we're seeing these numbers go down. Mr. Curley made a very good comment. We have to look at budgeting. And I think one of the parts is, in, in that time, we have had a decline of seven teachers for 400 students. That have, and I know there's administration. I know it's a difficult task. It's difficult across the town. And I think we have to look at every department. But police and public safety has been suffering for a number of years. And it shouldn't get worse. And I support the article. So can I? Chair recognizes Patrick Chilcott. So I, I just want to respond to two things. First of all, um, yes, enrollment um, is down, so I think it's a very perceptive, a very fair point. Um, it'd be ideal if the, the numbers went down perfectly so that you could eliminate exactly that number divided by 22 or 23 teachers. You can't. Um, 
and, and candidly, I'd be more than happy to put our budgeting process up to anybody's lens any day of the week. We spend four months doing it. But I guess my question, going back to sort of the funding source, and with uh, all due respect to the percentages that were given, we within the school department last year had a $450,000 surprise in transportation, and specifically in vocational transportation, and in the increment in the number of our kids going to vocational schools, for which, by the way, we received absolutely zero incremental funding to cover. It's one of those typical unfunded mandates. We had to find $400,000 in 53% of the budget, as it was just put. So I'm just asking us to go back and look at it again, because I do think the chief needs the guys. I just think free cash is the wrong place to, to be going to the till to pay for it. Chair recognizes Dan Tribuco from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I just want the folks at town meeting to know that the Board of Selectmen uh, support this uh, article, Article 13 and 14, uh, to give the police chief the, the monies that he needs for overtime and to fund the two officers that he's going to put into training. Uh, it's unfortunate that it needs to come from free cash, uh, as Mike Buckley, Mike Buckley's statements are very accurate, truly accurate. And the Board of Selectmen have been taking action uh, we've been, we have a joint committee with the school committee trying to find what the town spends, where it spends, what the town's needs are to fine-tune to fine -tune that. There are other studies looking specifically at capital items, and we have a town manager coming in very shortly. So uh, the Board of Selectmen are trying to move forward so we don't get into a pinch like we are now. It does take time to, to the wheels of government move slowly, but we are working toward those goals. Uh, it, it is unfortunate that this is being funded out of uh, capital monies. Uh, that's not the way to do it. That's not the way to run a town. We're in a pinch right now. We are looking to go f forward in a better way. And this spring, hopefully we will have uh, some some answers, some true hard numbers and facts so that uh, you folks, town meeting is a legislative body in town, so next spring you can make the hard decisions with recommendations from the folks up here going forward. Chair recognizes the gentleman at the microphone. Dan Pelletier, uh, West Elm Street. Is this being funded from free cash, stabilization, reserves? Because it says here stabilization, just want to clarify, because people Ch use the, the, the motion was free cash. Okay. All right. Any f further discussion? Chair recognizes Doc Yakabuchi. I'm just not clear you on gotta, the you have to use microphone. You have to use the microphone. Could the advisory committee please restate their recommendation on these two articles? Mr. Moder Moderator, through you Mr. to Chair the prior speaker. Steve Curley. Uh, last night, the advisory committee did vote favorable action on both of these. Any further discussion? You've heard lots of good discussion on both sides. It's now up to you. It takes a simple majority vote. All those in favor of the motion by Matt Furlong from the Board of Selectmen, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. <laughs> Article. 14 is the next item of business, and the chair recognizes Matt Furlong. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We move that $77,663 be appropriated from free crash and transferred to police department wages and salaries. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Matthew Furlong, please raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. That was Article 1, which we did already. Article 18. Chair recognizes Articles 18 is on page 8 of your warrant, and the chair recognizes Elizabeth Monks from advisory. Okay. All right. I'm, chair recognizes, I'm sorry, you state your name. 
Christina Manning, BB Lane. Christina Manning. Um, this article was to see if the town will vote to request Representative Josh Cutler sponsor a home rule petition to give release to four retired employees who are adversely affected by the current health insurance rules. Um, my family is actually directly yeah, affected. Stephanie, uh, I'm sorry, y your first name was? Christina. Christina, yeah, I think the motion is, why don't you read the motion so it's properly put before us. Oh, okay. That Steve gives you, okay. That the town will request that the state representative sponsor a home rule petition to allow Pembroke to separate by class retired employees for the purpose of revising the adverse effect of increased health insurance rates on a group of four retired employees. Motions are made, is there a second? Chair recognizes Christina. So my family is actually directly affected. My husband um, had to medically retire for a work injury. He worked for the Pembroke DPW for 27 years and as a call firefighter for 31 years. Um, and in 2015, when he retired, we were promised that he would pay 15% rate for health insurance. That was $4,307 um, annually. Since then, three years later, it's increased to $7,179, which is an increase of t over $2,800. Um, I don't think it's fair that we were promised 15% and it's increased to 25. Um, hmm? We had spoken to Mr. Thorne. Chair recognizes uh, Stacy. Oh, no? Okay, I'm sorry. recognizes Peg Struzik. I'm up in this article because I was the, and still am, the senior and the retirees representative for health insurance. Um, these, there are four individuals who have been adversely affected by a 62% increase in health insurance um, since they retired. One of them is 88 years old. The, um, one of them is 88 and Scott's dad. 84. 84, I'm sorry. Um, and the way this plan was set up in 2006, they, they started to increase, drastically increase the rates. And I went in front of the board of selectmen and they passed an agreement that they would freeze the employees at 15%, the retired employees at 15% with all future retirees going out at the rate that they were participating in. And three years ago they, and I can understand why I used to do health insurance, I understand the needed increase, but you can't go back and retro 62% worth of health increases to people who've been retired for years. They just don't have the money. These are four men living on very low pensions and they're paying 25% of their pension for health insurance. And I've always I've said to the board of selectmen many times when somebody comes in to a job, the first thing they find out is how much they're getting paid and how much their health insurance is. On the way out the door they ask, how much is my retirement and how much is my health insurance going to be? And Mr. Manning three years ago asked that question and was told that his health insurance would be 15% till he turned 65. And now the rules have changed and no family can support a 62% worth of health insurance increases on the pensions that these men are making. We get, we're not asking you to vote on it, we're just asking you to let us ask Josh Cutler to take it to the State House for a bill which the Selectman kind of agreed on last year with Josh, and Josh said no, put it off, because they were trying to do that statewide. Thank you. The, the chair would point out that uh, Peg has been in that position for many years, and should there be, and her only role in the outcome of this vote would be if there was a standing vote. And if there is a standing vote, Peg will recuse herself and let the assistant clerk handle the voting, uh, should that occur. Chair recognizes Scott Glavin from the DPW. Good evening. I'm just here on behalf of my father. He's 84 years old. He put 37 years in with the town of Pembroke. He retired on a 54% pension for medical reason. He makes $26,000 a year, retired. His health insurance cost him $4,000 a year. His taxes cost him $5,000 a year. Doesn't leave a hell of a lot to live on. I'm just here just to see if we can push this forward to have Mr. Cutler do it. Thank you very much. Chair recognizes Dan Tribugo from the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, for the information of town meeting, every single employee 
in the town of Pembroke has been, now pays 25% of their health care. Town pays 75%. Going back just a few years ago, cops paid one thing, the teachers paid another, the custodians paid another. Over the course of negotiations, the Board of Selectmen have brought everyone up to the same, the same amount. 25% is, is what the workers pay. Town pays 75%. Other towns, it's 50-50. This town might go to 50-50 if some of the dire financial information that we hear comes to fruition next year. So there were no promises made to any employee that were binding of staying at 15%. Costs increase, costs increase for the town, costs have increased for the employees. And it's unfortunate there are four people out of every single employee in town that are in dire straits that it's, um, that it's hit them hard, and I can understand that, and I can sympathize with that. But the Board of Selectmen cannot, by law, separate four people out from a group. It's either everyone is 25% or everyone is at 15%. So that's why we couldn't help out these four people. Not that we're not sympathetic to the pl their plight. Uh, by law, we couldn't separate them out. The only way you can separate them out is by a home rule petition, is what's for you. So if, if this goes forward to the State House and is passed, that will simply allow the town of Pembroke to break out the class. Everyone else will pay 25%, and these four people will pay the 15% that they have been paying. So. The, that's how we got there, and that's where we are now. I hope that helps. Chair recognizes former selectman Paul Dwyer. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I think Mr. Torrigo answered part of my question, which was who would pick up the cost if this relief was granted for the four. I think the other thing we have to consider is how many retirees do we have that will then come back and ask that they also get relief. And while I feel, I, I feel bad for, for everyone that, that is going through this, uh, I'm in the private sector. I'll have to pay COBRA when I retire until I can go on to uh, Medicare. So I have no permanent health insurance once I retire. I'll have to pick up those costs myself, and those costs keep going up every year. And I think everybody in the private sector is facing that. I think that what the town also has to face, and as Mr. Buckley has pointed out, is that we have some very severe financial issues facing us. We have a number of unfunded liabilities for retirees both the pension and the health care costs. And those are going to come home pretty soon and hit this town very, very hard. So, you know, the, the folks that are asking for relief, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from. I, I, I can sympathize with, with all the costs that are going up. But I think unless something changes and we get more fiscally responsible, it's going to get a lot worse. And there's a potential where you may see your pensions and everything else cut. And I saw that my late aunt, who was a retired teacher, she got a notice of her pension plan. No increase in her pension. Her health benefits were, were changed drastically, and her costs would have gone up if she was still alive. Chair recognizes Peg Struzan. Um, to the previous speaker through you, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Dwyer, you were on the Board of Selectmen who negotiated this article with me back in 2006. And the way it read is exactly how I said it was. And there can be nobody else put into this group. The two retirees, like Mr. Garvin's father, and I don't even know who the other one is. They are, they are over. They are retired from the town of Pembroke. But they never had any Social Security connection to get them on to Medicare. They're the only two people, so they have to stay on the town plan. The other two people are retired workers and they retired because they were both hurt on the job. They didn't choose to leave, they were hurt on the job. They were paying, one of them was paying 11% when they were hurt, the other one was paying, when I, like I said three years ago, on 15%. Um, now all employees are 25%, so nobody can go back on that 15% again. It's four people and only four people and they all got let us informing them at the time that we did this in May of 2006 that that's where they would stay till they turned 65. And everyone said it isn't a guarantee. No, it's not. There's not a written guarantee. But these were workers who worked for you guys. They were your employees who got hurt. And the other two are people who by state law cannot 
get on to Medicare. And it's a big problem. It's a problem throughout the whole state. The whole state is trying to backcharge retirees. How do you backcharge somebody 62% when you've guaranteed when they walked out, this is what you're going to, but you looked at them and asked, well, you looked them in the face and said you're going to pay what you're paying now till you turn 65. I, I mean, I know what you guys is vote, but they were your employees that got hurt, and it, the state rules out the other two, and nobody else can be put into it. Chair recognizes, I'm sorry. Dan Pelletier. Dan. Um, I guess one thing I want to point out is that you got the opportunity to negotiate with the unions to reduce their health insurance contributions to 25%. These people didn't get to negotiate. Um, you know, as someone who's negotiated plenty of municipal contracts, you know, in my experience, they've always been for, you know, effective this date, new hires will pay this percentage. Um, you know, to blanket back people who are retired, um, I don't know, I don't think is appropriate personally, but that's my two cents. Is there any further discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Christina Manning, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 3, which is on the first page of the warrant, and the chair recognizes Elizabeth Monks from advisory. Mr. Moderator, move that the town appropriate and transfer from solid waste revenue the sum of $200,000 and transfer it to the amount appropriated in Article 5, the FY19 solid waste operating budget at the May 9, 2018 annual town meeting. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further, any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Betty, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Uh, we did Article 2. Article 10. On page 4, and the chair recognizes Linda Peterson from advisory. Mr. Moderator, move to transfer the care, custody, management, and control of the tax title parcels of land identified in Article 10 of the October 2018 Special Town Meeting Warrant from the Town Administrator and or the Treasurer as the custodian of tax title parcels to the Conservation Commission for the purpose of conservation and passive recreation purposes under the provisions of General Law Chapter 40, Section 8C. Motion's been made and seconded. This does require two-thirds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Linda Peterson, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it unanimous. Article 17. Article 17 is on page 8, and the chair recognizes the petitioner, or primary first petitioner for this article, Stephanie Hagan. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend the general bylaws, Article 23, miscellaneous by inserting a new section 26 entitled Reduction of Single-Use Plastic Bags as printed in the 2018 Special Town Meeting Warrant. Is there a second? Chair, here is second. Chair recognizes Stephanie Hagan. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to have these two students, Noel and Ryan, speak on behalf of the petition. So the chair has been asked to ask the meeting um, for, uh, for permission for two high school students, Pembroke High School students, Noel Heron and Ryan Raleigh, to speak. Um, it requires a simple majority permission from the meeting. Uh, all those in favor of the motion by Stephanie to allow Noel and Ryan to speak, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, and I recognize Noel, right? Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Noel Heron, and I'm joined by Ryan Raleigh, and we are students here at Pembroke High School. Uh, Ryan and I are the co-presidents of the Environmental Awareness Club, and the purpose of our club is to protect the planet that we live on. Um, 
Every other week, Ryan and I, joined by some of our friends who are in the club, we go to different classes around the school and we take out the recycling just to make a small impact. But we can make a larger impact by getting this plastic ban tonight. When Ryan and I were given this opportunity, it was exactly what we were striving for in our club, so we were all over it. And through our research about the impacts of the plastic ban on the town, we learned many interesting things that would be beneficial to our town that Ryan can tell you about now. Chair recognizes Ryan Raleigh. Hello, everyone. As Noel said, I'm Ryan Raleigh, the other co-president of the Environmental Awareness Club at Pembroke High School. Uh, it's a common misconception that plastic bags are just given out and are free, but just last year in Pembroke alone, retailers spent over $400,000 on plastic bags. And uh, plastic bags may initially cost less to produce, but in the long run, paper bags are cheaper to recycle. And uh, also, uh, last year, plastic bags used 1.6 billion gallons, or 8% of the world's uh, non-renewable oil. Reducing the use of the plastic bags would help the supply of oil be uh, used to use for more important things like heating homes. And uh, Noel and I, plus a lot of other members of our club, have been working hard to improve the environment now and for the future. As kids of the community, we care how Pembroke will look in the future, and we believe by regulating plastic bags, we can achieve a better future for the current community and future generations. Thank you. Chair recognizes, I'm sorry, you state your name. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Gordon Martin, and I'm the uh, chairman of the Board of Health Plastic Bag Bag sub Subcommittee. I personally support a plastic bag ban, but I do not support this plastic bag ban uh, because it allows the uh, uh, the toxic synthetic fabrics into the reusable cloth bags. Uh, that's the problem. Some communities have addressed this issue and have have um, have passed bylaws that that uh, banned toxic synthetic bags uh, into their plastic bags. Um, it's a big problem. I have not one, not two, but four independent studies that have proven that this is a, uh, uh, a problem in our environment. It's a big problem. Let's not eliminate one environmental hazard and replace it with another environmental hazard. That doesn't make sense to me. This needs a little bit more work. I have contacted the Mass Green Network, and I have learned a lot in the last two months about plastic bag bans. This bylaw is flawed and needs to be rewritten. Um, I, being the uh, chairman of the plastic bag bylaw committee, subcommittee, I would suggest very strongly that let us do our work. Let us examine and, and work on some of these flaws, and let's put together the best bylaw for the town of Pembroke uh, in, uh, in, the, in the near future. Thank you. Chair recognizes Stephanie Hagan. Um, I would like to respond to the issue that our language for a reusable bag includes the term synthetic. I've read many of the articles that he's discussing. Um, most of them have been um, researched and funded by organic clothing companies themselves. Um, so that's important to note. I will also want to note that, yes, ideally, I would love to not have anyone use synthetic bags, but I think that could be detrimental to small businesses because we are trying to allow them to provide usable, reusable bags if they would like to that are not of significant cost. You can have a full of canvas bag, a full cotton bag, a full wool bag even, that may have synthetic um, thread or other type of fiber, fibers woven into it. And I think that that would do a disservice to our small businesses to remove that language, synthetic. He was referencing one word in the law within the reusable bag section. Chair, not previously hadn't, hadn't spoken, the chair recognized the gentleman to my left. Could you state your name? Greg McPhee. <coughs> I'm sorry, I always Greg? Had Greg McPhee. I always had Bluff Road. And uh, a lot of you might know me from around town, um, my work with the 
Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts, which um, one of our main tenants is conservation. And um, I'm a fourth generation Pembroke resident myself and my son is uh, fifth generation. So I think to look and see our youth, we need to set an example of um, what they should be striving for. And this may, might be a small step in the right direction, but I think history proves that small things can make big differences and taking no action at all can often have very grave consequences as well. So for the sake of our young men that we're raising in this town to be environmentally aware, I think this is an important thing and I ask that we vote favorably. Chair recognizes Gordon Martin. I, I, I agree that a plastic, I agree that we need a plastic bag ban. I, I agree wholeheartedly. However, um, talking with the Mass Green Network, their members have told me that, um, that communities that have rushed through plastic bag bylaws are now revisiting some of the problems that they, that they made. Uh, they're tr trying to uh, get rid of the loopholes, they're trying to rewrite and improve. I'm saying let's not pass it tonight and let's put some thought into it and pass a better bylaw that makes better sense and let's not make the mistake of, of this, what the, let's improve the bylaw and let's, make a, let's do it wisely. Chair recognizes, uh, Chair recognizes Patrick Chilcott from the school committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. So um, I'm going to take a very different viewpoint in the sense that I think this plastic ban thing uh, is crazy. The, at the end of the day, creating and making a plastic bag actually takes less energy than making a paper bag. So from an environmental perspective, it, it, we're not saving the environment by um, eliminating plastic bags. We're also negating the fact that most people use a plastic bag multiple times much more so than they will a larger paper bag. But more importantly, it has a business effect for folks in town. A couple of residents from Hanover said, yeah, go ahead and pass that. Hanover doesn't have one. It, so businesses in Pembroke aren't gonna be able to give a plastic bag, but businesses in Hanover will. Businesses in Kingston will. Businesses in Marshfield will. My next question becomes, when does it stop? So if a plastic bag is something that is now so environmentally detrimental, and by the way, the, the initial uh, statistic of 1.6 billion gallons is worldwide plastic bans. I cannot imagine that the number of plastic bans you, bags used by the town of Pembroke is using 1.6 billion gallons of oil. But where does it stop? Aluminum doesn't really biodegrade. Should we eliminate aluminum cans? Bottles, not biodegradable. We should eliminate them. If this is about trash and this is about other things, then we should step up our enforcement of trash. But we can't go around banning things because it feels good. We have to take a look at the logic behind what we're doing, think about what we're doing, and move forward with something that makes logical sense. Pembroke is not going to affect the environment that dramatically. We ha you would have to get everyone in the Commonwealth to do it. Otherwise, the detrimental effects to business, the detrimental effects to residents, and at the end of the day, not doing anything to better the environment means this really doesn't make any sense. I ask you to vote against it. I'm just gonna try to recognize people in New Orleans, which they stood up. Chair recognizes. Hi, Cody Pajic, 286 Cody, Pleasant Cody Street. Um, so I just want to address two points. The first one brought up by the speaker over here about um, the fact that the language in this bylaw is not up to the standards that he would like. Um, he's correct. A lot of other towns that have passed similar language are starting to revisit their bylaws. That's how government works. If a year from now we find out that the bylaw we passed tonight doesn't work exactly as we want it to, there might be loopholes in it, there might be something wrong, that allows the Board of Health and town meeting to have a chance to revisit it and amend it as needed. Um, over two years ago, I approached a member of the Board of Health and said, hey, we should really consider a plastic bag ban. He said, absolutely, I've been thinking about the same thing for a very long time. And he said, we're gonna get right on that, we're gonna form a subcommittee, we're gonna do all this great stuff. And months went down the line, kicking the can down the road, never really got done until a member of the community, shout out Stephanie, uh, brought it to their attention in a much larger way and said, no, we're gonna start doing this now. And look where we are, this is now a citizen petition on town meeting floor. If we just rely on, you know, 
the plastic bag subcommittee and hoping that they'll come up with a solution that's favorable to everybody and waiting for them to do their work and come out with their studies and have their meetings and create the perfect bylaw, we're never gonna actually get this done. Pass it tonight, amend it later if needed. Um, the second point is with regards to kind of what we're doing here tonight. I really want to encourage people to try to think larger than just Pembroke. It's really easy to ignore this by saying, oh, I've never seen a plastic bag on the side of the road. I see nips more than that. I see you know, needles more than that. There's bigger problems that we should be dealing with, and ultimately this doesn't affect the environment at all. But you're really not thinking on the entire scale of the entire lifespan of a plastic bag. Flash for back about 300 million years ago, your plastic bag was alive probably in the form of algae. Um, flash forward to now, and we have to extract that algae because it's now in the form of oil. When we extract it, we do it either through drilling or through hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking. Drilling and fracking for oil causes habitat destruction. It's propelling us towards the sixth mass, extin mass extinction, um, causing the extinction and endangerment of uncountable numbers of species of organisms. Um, it is seizing lands in the Midwest through eminent domain, drilling on their land and endangering the public health of the people who live there because the oil from the pipelines there is leaking into their water supply. Now, once you have that plastic bag and it's in your hand, by the way, 12 million barrels of oil per year are used for the production of plastic bags nationwide, according to recent data from the Environmental Protection Agency. Now, flash forward, you got the plastic bag, you're bringing it from the grocery store to your car to your home, and you might reuse it a couple of times at most as a can liner or for your pets. And after that, there are three places that your plastic bag can go. The first one, you might recycle it properly. You can bring it to the store where it says drop off your plastic bags here, and that is kind of the most responsible thing to do for it. You drop them in there. There's a really big misconception that if you put 10 plastic bags into that bin, they're gonna be regenerated into 10 plastic bags and you can have that loop going forever and ever. Recycling isn't that clean, especially recycling with plastics. Um, and so it doesn't actually end up as that, it ends up as insulation, fleece, and other you know, things that can be used once before being landfilled. Second option, you're gonna to try to recycle it by throwing it in your single stream recycling bins. And a lot of people do this. In fact, to the point the materials, that the material recoveries facility we partner with has to shut down their machinery about once every half an hour to once an hour in order to have their workers take those plastic bags out of the machines because it jams them up. That endangers the, um, that endangers the safety of the workers there. And it also makes those recycling plants a lot less efficient, which means that at the end of the day, you're paying a lot more for recycling because of the increased labor in, re in removing the plastic bags and because if they somehow make it through, they end up contaminating the plastic bales and nobody wants to buy those. Nine months ago, China said, we're not buying your recycling anymore because it's too contaminated. Plastic bags were a big factor in that. Now, the third and final place that your recycling, that your bag could go when you're done with it is straight to the landfill. And by the way, according to the EPA, that's where about 98 to 99% of your plastic bags end up directly. Once it's there, it disintegrates into microplastics. Those micro microplastics seep into the water table and you end up drinking and eating it and that endangers public health. So, you know, it might seem like, all right, we're not really accomplishing anything here. And in the grand scheme of things, true, right? But the solution to our overarching environmental crisis is not going to come in the form of one perfect sweeping piece of legislation from the federal government. It's going to come in a patchwork of different solutions pushed by communities like Pembroke where we can gather here and talk freely about what's the best way to accomplish our overall environmental goals, and little tiny bills like this do add up if you take them across thousands of communities across the country. Um, I'm gonna stop monopolizing now, but I would really encourage everyone here, think globally, act locally, please pass this plastic bag, Dan. Chair recognizes uh, Mr. Continue. Moderator, David Skolnick, Captain Tory Lane. Uh, point of order, how old is Cody there? Is he over 18, because he looked uh, I, th I think the chair we need to would answer in the affirmative. Yeah, because, wow. Hello, really... my name is Cody. Um, I am actually 19. So I turned 18 last year. Um, and to prove that, thanks. So um, if anyone, so actually well, I, like, I, I, I yay, can't, somebody I can't, enforces. Ooh, I, I got it one person at a time. So, so this thank gentleman. you, Cody. I, I appreciate your words. Very well organized and quite the, uh, quite the speech of fine. Uh, I can't count myself as a townie in Pembroke because I've only lived here about 30 years. I haven't got four uh, generations in the, in the cemetery. But I, I have a strong feeling for conservation in Pembroke, um, having been involved in various uh, activities in the town for a while. And uh, I think the, the first thing that I'd like to say in response to the many speakers on both sides of this issue is let us not make the perfect the enemy of the good. We have uh, folks that are saying, let's wait and come up with a perfect bill. There's never going to be a perfect bill. Let us go with the good bill we have in front of us. It's going to do good things for the town. And second, I have to say that my wife, God love her, 
She wants me to use recycled bags. She wants me to use the, the reusable bags. And you know, my, my steadfast practice is to not use any bags. Just throw it right in the cart, take it, throw it right in the trunk, bring it right home. You don't need bags, people, at all, really. So just saying. And uh, finally, I think we've heard enough from both sides of this argument. So, Speaker, I, yes, I can. I can move the question, and he no. can accept the motion. Uh, no, no, can't do that. Sorry, uh, can't speak, and then then close the barn door behind you. Um, they, I'm going to go to someone who's previously not spoken on this subject, so the chair recognizes former selectman Paul Dwyer. Hi, Mr. Moderator. Um, one thing to Cody, there is another use for these bags, and where I work. They have bins to collect these bags so they can make blankets and pillows for the homeless. So there, there is another use, and there's a very good purpose for, the, for these one-time use bags, uh, which do get used multiple times. Uh, I will say, as Cody admitted, this, there are flaws with this Warren article. One of them states that the retailers shall provide the reusable bags. So now are the retailers going to, so the retailers won't have to sell you, can't sell you the bags, they're going to have to give you the reusable bags, the way this article is written. You're going to drive their costs right through the roof. Um, it also states that, you know, it can be forced, enforced by any agent of the Board of Health. Well, how are we defining any agent? Is that any elected member of the Board of Health? Anybody who's been appointed by the Board of Health? And I know Ms. Cullity will, will try and clarify this, but it's, it's vague when it says any agent. I think before we pass a bill to find out what's in it, we should hold off, defer this to the Board of Health so that their committee can take a look, and st take a look at this and study it. Because the last thing we want to do is pass something to find out what's in it. We've seen how that's worked in Washington when they try and go back and revisit it. Chair recognizes our library director and Webmaster Deborah Wall. Deborah Wall, Woodbine Ave. Um, I just want to say that this is not a new idea, folks. They were pushing cotton bags in the stop and shop, oh, I don't know, early 80s. I think I have them. This is not new. This is just something that is now being pushed forward with a little more emphasis by people who care about the environment. People throw them in the trash. People, I pick them up on my, when I walk my dog. And as far as reusing them, speaking of my dog, um, if you happen to get a bag from the stop and shop, you, it doesn't make it home. It doesn't make it home in any kind of reusable state. Um, so that's a problem. I'm glad I get newspapers. Um, but it's not new. And I think that we can revisit the bylaw. If it's flawed, that's true. But 85 towns in Massachusetts have already done this. The state, I've been told, is looking at this as a statewide movement as well. Now, if the state does it, it would override our bylaw, I'm, th I'm thinking. But in any event, we could look at it, and once it's in place, we would see what flaws there were. Thank you. Chair recognizes health agent Lisa Cull Cullity. <clears throat> I want to be clear that I'm not speaking to the article, Mr. Moderator. I'm only raising the questions, uh, answering the questions that have been raised. The town has one agent, that is myself. I would be the only enforcement agent. State statute allows me to appoint agents to assist me, i.e. independent contractors. It was a statute done about 15 years ago when there weren't enough people to do inspections. So we do have two restaurant inspectors that are hired um, as subcontractors that can act with my due authority when they go out and inspect a restaurant. Um, the number of establishments using these materials are pretty consistent with our food um, license establishment. There's very few outside food license establishment that use these bags. So by and large, the inspections slash enforcement is something that is already occurring twice a year at all these establishments based on the, the inspections that we already do under food uh, service and retail. Chair recognizes, again, not previously haven't spoken on this matter, Sabrina Chilcott. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm not here to discuss the merits or disadvantages or problems with plastic bags. I'm here to discuss the disadvantages and problems with the article. It's poorly written. It still says first draft. The enforcement is so ambiguous it can't actually be enforced. And frankly, the language is terrible. And I'm sorry. I know that's not what anybody wants to hear. We want to talk about environments and banning. I get it. But the bottom line is the writing on this article is on this, uh, excuse me, bylaw proposal isn't even up to the standard of our current bylaws, which are dated. Thank you. Chair recognizes Dan Pelletier. 
Just a different tune. Does anyone walk out of Trader Joe's and say, man, I wish I had a plastic bag instead? I mean, what are we really fighting against? That's all. Chair recognizes Stephanie Hagan. I just want to point out some inaccurate information that's been set up here that's actual facts. Um, there are 85 towns that she mentioned that have already passed this in the state, including Marshfield, including Plymouth, including Bridgewater. Hanover will be passing theirs next year. Situate should be passing theirs next week. Hanson will be passing theirs in the spring. So you will be driving quite far just to get your plastic bags. And maybe we'll have people in town coming here just to get their plastic bags. Um, once we get to the majority of cities and towns in the state, it will be going to a statewide vote. So at that point, within two to three years, it will be going to a statewide vote anyways. Um, also want to mention that only 4% of plastic bags are recycled and or reused for dog poop or things of that nature, 4%. Chair recognizes, not previously having spoken, Stephen Walsh. Hi, Steve Walsh, Bendel Lane. I, I think it's, you have a great divide here. And I think when you start passing bylaws that are gonna affect the whole town, maybe you should let the whole town vote on it. So I'm not in favor of this, but I'm just one person here. We're probably down to about 100 people, depending on how this vote turns out. In other bigger communities, they've put this on the ballot, and then we can really find out what the people in the town want. But right now, according to their figures from the people from this committee, 3% of the people in this town are using those little canvas bags which means this is going to affect 97% of the people in this town. Do we have that enforcement? We have one health inspector who deals with restaurants, doesn't deal with the rest of the things in town. So I don't know where all our employees, you look at our budget, it isn't like we can hire some more. If anything, we'll be sending some people home. So I think, just a suggestion, I would vote it down let the Board of Selectmen put it on the ballot and let everyone vote for it in the spring. Then it'll be binding and we'll have a good idea. Thank you. Chair recognizes Lisa Cullity. No. Um, I'll defer to the other speakers. Chair recognizes Patrick. Uh, actually, pa uh, go ahead. All right. No. Gentlemen, I'm sorry if you could state your name. Yeah, Evan Hagen, Dwelly Street. Chair recognizes Evan Hagen. So the town of Plymouth has 60,000 people, one health agent. We have 20,000 people in Pembroke, one health agent. I mean, if, as far as a small business providing a bag, a paper bag is a reusable bag, I understand there may be some adjustment to the bylaw down the road, but if you get handed a paper bag over a plastic bag, I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't think anybody's gonna have a fit about that. If you get handed a bag to carry your product out of the store, I think it, and it makes it home, I think everybody would be pleased with that, and we're helping the environment. Chair recognizes Selectman Bill Bolter. On now? Okay. Um, what I'd like to say is that the Board of Selectmen uh, recommend favorable action on this article. And um, this, this is a, uh, in my opinion, it's a big article um, that we should pass. I, I really uh, like the idea of a subcommittee um, and I appreciate all the time and effort that Mr. Martin and his group are putting in to, um, you know, to look over this article. But I think that we should pass this article tonight and next year in the spring when it comes to the springtime or whatever, we can take care of any uh, minor um, uh, writing that's in there or if the article needs to be amended for something else, then we amend it. But if all these other towns, there's 80 something other towns in the state that have gone to this, then I don't see why we don't go to it. The other thing is that we're looking at our trash going up in rates. And I don't, nobody wants their trash going up in rates. And one of the reasons that the trash is going up in rates is because of plastic yeah. bags. So uh, I'd just like to see this article passed. Chair recognizes, not previously spoken, your name? Uh, Walter Scola, Child Mark Street, move Walter. the question. 
the motion to move the question is always in order, most always in order. It's in order now. It is non-debatable. If it passes, we go right on to the question. If it fails, we'll continue debating. All those in favor of the motion to move the question, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. So we'll go right to the question. The motion has been made by Stephanie Hagan. It, is, it requires a simple majority vote. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. <laughs> Article 9. Mr. Article 9 is on page 4. The chair recognizes uh, Elizabeth Monks from advisory. Mr. Moderator, move to transfer the care, custodial, custody, custody, management, and control of the tax title parcels of land identified in Article 9 of the warrant for the October 2018 special town meeting from the town administrator and or treasurer as a custodian of the tax title parcels to the Board of Selectmen for general municipal purposes and or the purpose of sale in future to further authorize the Board of Selectmen to, to convey said parcels on such terms and authority the Board of Selectmen to convey said parcels on such terms and conditions and for such consideration as they deem appropriate. Motions been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor, this does require two thirds. All those in favor of the motion by Betty Monks, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Uh, the ayes have it, I declare it so voted. Unanimous which is better than two-thirds. Article 4, we... No, Article 4 is the next item of business. Mr. Moderator, we move that the sum wait, of... Wait, wait a minute. The chair, the chair would, just would advise um, that there are actually six separate motions that are associated with uh, this... Article 4, and for purposes of making the first, mo first motion, the chair recognizes Matt Furlong from the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We move that the sum of 323000 be appropriated to fund capital projects and equipment and funding sources related thereto in accordance with the capital budget schedule appearing in Article 4 of the warrant, excluding those items to be funded by borrowing and by free cash. That and that to meet this appropriation, 103,000 shall be transferred from overlay surplus and 220,000 shall be transferred from the water surplus. Motion has been, uh, is there a second? Second. Chair has second. Any discussion on this motion? Chair recognizes Deb Wall. Mr. Moderator, um, I understand the motion and, and uh, that's fine. We have three articles in this and the one that was earmarked as free cash is actually our more priority one. It's our fire alarm and fire suppression system for $9,000. I would like, if it's possible, and I don't know how to do that um, on this floor, to move that article into overlay surplus and take out the $15,000 carpet. So actually it's cheaper. Um, is that possible? Is that something we can do? Well, the chair would state that amendments are always in order, but we need it in writing. And the chair recognizes Linda Peterson. Mr. Moderator, would you have the Board of Selectmen enumerate exactly which articles they're talking about, what they are exactly saying for the benefit of the townsfolk? I don't think it's clear. Chair recognizes. Matthew Furlong. Sure. So we'd go ahead and move every funding. If you look, take a look at Article 4 in the warrant, every article or every item that has free cash under funding would be removed. 
Chair recognizes Mike Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I think everyone knows how I feel um, about next year's budget and how I feel about um, saving every nickel we can, including not only free cash but overlay surplus. So I would strongly recommend that um, this motion not be passed and all overlay surplus and all free cash be saved for next year's budget. We talked about ad nauseum before what next year's budget is going to look like. Um, and that's my two cents. Thank you. Chair recognizes Kathy Salmon, Chief Assessor Appraiser. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, out of the overlay surplus, I'm looking for an assessor's vehicle. I know in light of everything that's been talked about, you're probably wondering what in the world is the importance of that, and I have to tell you that. The assessors are required to inspect and re-inspect all the property in town. We have 7,000 parcels. I have to value $2.8 billion of value each and every year. The Department and Revenue requires that we go out to those properties. If we don't go to the properties, we don't get our value certified. If we don't get certification of values, then the town can't get a certified tax rate. If we don't have a certified tax rate, then we can't send actual property tax bills. The property tax is the single largest revenue stream for the town of Pembroke. We pay 60%, excuse me, we fund 60% of the revenue of the budget through the property tax. I need the car. The reason that it's here now is not because of poor planning on the assessors. This was on the capital plan for the town for fiscal year 2014. In 2012, I started informing the town administrator, the board of selectmen, and the advisory that our car was up and due to be replaced. It kept running, so we kept foregoing it, but we kept warning the town that if something happened, we needed it replaced. I can't wait on this. I can't have the car go down, and I can't not be out inspecting. It's not a problem just for the assessors. It's a big problem for the town. So I ask that you support the article um, that is requesting this item out of overlay surplus. Thank you. Chair recognizes Scott Glavin, DPW. Hi, Scott Glavin, Assistant Director for the DPW. We have two articles on this for OSHA safety equipment. As of February of next year, we fall under the rules of OSHA, which we don't do right now. We try to follow them, but we don't have to. As of February, we are mandated. If we do not get this equipment, the gentleman will not be getting in holes to repair water breaks or any road issues out there, because by law they can't. So we need the safety equipment. We've been looking for it for a couple of years. We need it this year, or you're going to have big problems if we have water breaks out there. Thank you. Chair recognizes Dan Trevuco from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, so Mr. Moderator, through you to town meeting, this is the start of the belt tightening. We had, we funded some articles earlier this meeting through free cash. You can't, you, you can't take it all. It has to come from somewhere. It's coming from here. This is what we have. The assessor's car, you're going to have to use your own and, and take mileage. Your trench boxes, the last, when's the last time the DPW dug a trench without having a subcontractor do it anyway? You're going to have to do, you're going to have to do it yourself. This, this is... This is the start of it. This is the, the start of it. Next year is going to be worse. And Scott, if I misspoke, please just, just tell me well, I'm wrong well, about the trench Well, I can't, can't, right, right I, 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 I can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. Just, I'm so, fair warning. This is the start. Next year it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Next year, well, let's deal with this town meeting. This is the start of it. It's going to get worse. Next year, you're gonna, we're all going to have to make tough decisions in this room and at the ballot box next year. Chair recognizes Scott Glavin. Dan, I, I respect your issue for this, but just in the town green, when we were doing the Route 14 project, we had to add a catch basin in. The guys were down 11 feet in a sandy hole. That's where they needed the box. We didn't have the box. Luckily, we squeaked by and got the job done. We've had water breaks where the trench is over 10 feet deep. 
We've been fortunate, there's been no accidents. Now all you're doing is forcing us to call a contractor every time it's something that we have to get in a hole for. Thank and you I, for I'm, just giving, I'm just giving you a heads up, that's all there. No. Chair recognizes Chief Wall. Thanks for clarifying that. So on the uh, items that the police department was looking for, uh, you can remove the entry, exterior, interior door. We can wait on that. The uh, true knock handheld, you know, we had two officers that got exposed to uh, unknown chemicals and ended up in the hospital, but we can wait on that. Uh, the ammunition for mandatory firearms training, uh, normally at the end of the year I have no line item for ammunition. At the end of the budget year we look through all of our uh, unspent monies, we usually cobble together enough money to encumber it to pay for the, um, pay for the training which we do in September. So that one's kind of, uh, kind of important, we've already had most of our firearms training. And uh, the purchase of one police cruiser suppl supplemental funds, the spring budget only included $38,000, $37,500 to purchase a cruiser, and that's from, I don't know, 2004. Uh, the price of the cruiser, again, what we asked for was $51,000. Um, if we have to go without a cruiser because the belt has to be tightened, I mean, we're going to end up probably paying for maintenance in the long run, but uh, do what you got to do, but I absolutely need to have ammunition because that's a mandatory training. Thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion? So we have two items before us and five more after this, all in the same article. The first is the um, motion by Deborah Wall to amend the main motion. And her motion is as follows. Uh, move, to motion to move to amend Article 4 by changing the funding source for the library replacement of fire alarm and fire suppression system from free cash to overlay surplus and to further amend by changing the funding source for a library replacement or carpet in, is that or carpet in children's room from overlay surplus to free cash, such that amount be transferred from overlay surplus is decreased by $5,948. That's the motion. Second. It's been seconded. All those in favor of Deborah's motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. On the main motion by Matthew Furlong, as amended, Chair recognizes Becky Coletta from the Planning Board. Hi, Becky Coletta, Verna Hall Drive. I just have a question on the on the motion that's before us right now. I see DPW is asking for water surplus of two hundred twenty thousand for the Swanberg property water supply development cost. Could somebody just tell us what that is? And I take it if it's coming from water surplus, it's already baked into the water rates. Chair recognizes Mike Buckley. That's not in this motion, Matt? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The $220,000 is basically the profit and the retained earnings that the Water Enterprise Fund has used, and this is to continue to, to um, develop the Swangburg property as a new well site. Any further discussion on the main motion as amended? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. On second motion, on Article 4, the chair recognizes Matthew Furlong. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The town appropriate, or we move that the town appropriate 625000 to pay costs of purchasing a full-size pumper engine for the use of the fire department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of, the, of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, less any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of insurance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Is there a second? 
Chair, uh, motion is made and seconded. The chair recognizes Fire Chief Michael Hill. So by that motion, I'm assuming you're not going to support the other engine and the hose and appliances. No, two motions. I only heard the one. The 625. Chair recognizes Dan Tribuco. Uh, Chief, it has to be two motions. There will there'll be a second motion after this. Both, both supported by the selectmen. Chair recognizes uh, Steve Curley. Uh, Mr. Moderator, um, just want to point out that while this is not going to affect the free cash and it's not going to affect the uh, current budget, it is going to be, well, what is this going to be, a 10-year borrow? This one's a 15, the next one. Uh, okay. No, this, this, is this a, one's an 8, the next one's a 15. Okay, this one's an 8-year borrow, so this is going to be adding... Uh, $70,000 a year approximately to the uh, to the budget just in the debt uh, servicing um, again after some of the things that went before I'm very very uh, nervous about uh, what the future budgets are going to be this is getting uh, it's it's piling on chair recognizes Mike Buckley thank you mr. moderator just to be clear there are two motions um, one on the floor right now for a fire truck to be bonded and paid for by the general fund. And then the next motion will be a fire truck, a fire pumper, um, to be bonded and paid for by the ambulance fund. Um, I am speaking against this one that's to be funded by the general fund because I honestly don't think the general fund in fiscal 20, especially what's gone after what's gone on tonight and what we already know, will be able to afford the debt, uh, debt service. I will um, tell everyone, I will support the next one because the chief has identified a funding source. I hate to say it because I know how bad they need the trucks, both trucks, but um, that's where I stand. Thank you. Chair recognizes my uh, Chief Hill. Just a little background. Um, the beginning of the budget process for the capital meeting, um, my request was going to be for one engine. That was until we had our annual inspection. Um, the 31-year-old vehicle that we were using for a backup to be placed into each station when another went out of service or went in for long-term repairs uh, is no longer an option. It will not pass a safety inspection and it will not pass an emissions inspection. Um, again, that's a 31-year-old truck. I think the town has got its share from that. Um, the next three are all 20, 22, and 23 years old. Um, the 22-year-old truck has a chronic problem. It just, it will not, we spend $10,000 a year on it it just need, needs to be replaced. That's why I would like the support of the body for, for this truck. Uh, right now, when, it, when a piece of apparatus goes out of service, we have three outlying stations. Uh, we take the engine out of that station, and that particular part of town is now has less coverage. So it's about maintaining what we have. The town isn't getting smaller. It's, and these, these vehicles are being used more and more because we are responding to more and more calls frequently together. We don't just do one at a time anymore. So we have to have reliable equipment to get the people to you. Is there any further discussion on this item? Which does require two-thirds because it's a borrowing authorization. All those in favor of the motion by Matthew Furlong, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds needed for passage. Article of motion three. Two-thirds. Well, anyone can question the two-thirds. If seven people stand up, we'll have a standing vote, so, and question the, the moderator's judgment, so, which is perfectly appropriate. Well, if seven people stand up and question it, we'll have a standing vote. A sufficient number having standing, the chair will ask the tellers to jump into action. And all those in favor of the motion by Matt Furlong, please stand and remain standing until counted.
Davison, 16. Ellen Davison, 16, yes. Judy Graham, 14, yes. Elaine Nicholas, four, um, excuse me, six, yes. Gail Sim, 36, yes. All those, all those voting in opposition to the motion, please stand and remain standing until counted. Davison, 15, no. Nicholas, 6, no. Just, just go right in the microphone. Judy Graham, 2, no. Gail Sim, 10, no. Hi, Math here. Um, the chair would uh, report that the vote was 72 in favor, 33 in the negative, uh, sufficient number having reached for, two, for passage. Uh, the two thirds would have been 70, so it passed by two votes. 72, 33. So the motion carries and is so voted. The chair recognizes uh, uh, Matt Furlong uh, from a, a Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We move that the town appropriate $625,000 to pay costs of purchasing a full-size pumper engine for the use of the fire department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore, any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, less any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of insurance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, or Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Second. Motions in vain seconded. The chair recognizes Mike Buckley. Quickly, uh, Mr. Moderator, the chief has come up with a plan to pay for the debt service from the ambulance fund, so this should be passed unanimously. Any further discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those, uh, this once again requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion by Matt Furlong, please raise your hand. Opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Fourth motion, chair recognizes Matt Furlong. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We move that the town appropriate 75,000 to pay costs of purchasing supply hose, attack hose, and related appliances for the use of the fire department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, less any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of insurance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of the cost approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. 
Motion's been made and seconded. Chair recognizes Chief Hill. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this article is to replace most, if not all, of our hoes. Uh, a lot of our supply hoes is from the 90s. A lot of our attack hoes is from the early 2000s, uh, as well as our appliances. And this will just upgrade our, our hose inventory to meet the needs of the department. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a two-thirds. All those in favor of the motion by Matthew Furlong, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Chair recognizes Matt Furlong. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We move that the town appropriate 75000 to pay costs of purchasing one dump truck and plow for the use of the DPW department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of insurance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on this matter? This, once again, requires a two-thirds. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds needed for passage. Chair recognizes Matthew Furlong. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We move that the town appropriate $1,750,000 to pay costs of upgrades to the water filtration plant, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, $860,669.03 shall be transferred from funds borrowed to pay costs of roof replacement projects at the North Pembroke and Hobmock Elementary Schools, Pembroke Community Middle School, and Pembroke High School which amount is no longer needed to complete the projects for which it was borrowed, and the treasurer with the approval of the selectmen is authorized to borrow $889,330.97 under and pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote lest any such premium applied to the payments of the cost of insurance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Second. Motions been made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, this requires a two-thirds as well. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it. I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Three items of business left, and the chair has been remiss. Uh, for many years, the town has been ably represented by Copelman and Page, and tonight we're happy to have with us uh, in the place of our usual town council, Joel Bard, Carolyn Murray, who's sitting to the left of the board of selectmen here, and we thank Carolyn for... For services, uh, the next item of business is Article 14, which we did, actually, right? Yeah, so. Article 7. The chair recognizes Matthew Norton from advisory. Move that the town appropriate and transfer from free cash the sum of $100,000 to be added to the other post-employment benefits liability fund established by a vote of Article 11 of April 24, 2012, Annual Town Meeting. And further, that the sum of $125,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the amount voted in Article 16 of the November 4, 2003, Special Town Meeting to fund separation pay benefits. And further, that the sum of $25,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the Special Injury Leave Fund established by a vote of April Article 7 of the May 9, 2017 town meeting, and further that the sum of $75,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the Workers' Compensation Insurance Fund established by the vote of Article 4 of the October 24, 2017 town meeting 
and that the sum of $25,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the stabilization fund. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, this just uh, requires a simple majority. All those in favor of the motion by Matthew Norton, please raise your hand. Nope. Nope. Yeah. All right, yeah, uh, simple majority. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. The last item of business, correct? is the item that we postponed, Article 15. And the chair recognizes Steve Curley of uh, advisory. Mr. Moderator, um, this is another sum that would be coming out of free cash to uh, increase the uh, wages in, in a, as a line item. Uh, at this point in time, I would recommend unfavorable action as we've uh, spent a considerable amount of the free cash and have very little left. And that, and that meeting will be in a very brief recess. There, just to, as uh, the chair would remind the meeting that there is a motion that was made by Eric Hurt from uh, the Recreation Commission that $20,892 be appropriated from free cash and transferred to community center custodial wages and salaries. So that's the motion before the table. Uh, Steve didn't make a motion. He just is urging that the meeting not support it. Chair recognizes uh, Eric Hurt from Recreation. Yeah, I just wanted to say a few quick things. I'm um, kind of glad this got pushed till the end because I've sat here um, for several hours listening to people talk about tightening belts and not enough money, and time after time the money is spent. Um, I can tell you I've uh, coached summer basketball for my daughter at the rec center. I've gone to countless events there. Uh, just today at work, my wife sent me a picture of my son playing soccer there. Um, and I think if you're going to draw a line, um, why's it got to be there? That's all I got to say. Chair recognizes Dan Fabigo from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Mr. Moderator, for the town meeting's information, the Board of Selectmen have vo voted to take no action on this, which is uh, the way the motion has been. We are opposed to this. Chair recognizes Patrick Chilcott from, uh, from the school committee. So I just have a question, Mr. Moderator. Does recreation have, and I believe they do, a revolving fund? And if so, how much is in it? And could you use those funds for this? Chair recognizes Mike Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The recreation uh, department has a revolving fund with um, over $200,000 in it. There are probably 24 sub funds with all those funds are broken out in. Um, Conceivable, they, they could use their revolving fund, and that's originally what the intention was, that this person be paid half from the budget, half from the revolving fund. The person, um, the individual, the department bought a truck, the department bought landscaping equipment, the department bought a trailer, and then somewhere along the line, the department decided if they didn't want this person to do the landscaping anymore, and they wanted to hire a private contractor to do a landscape. And this is on the ball fields, it's not really landscaping. And they decided they wanted to come to the town to, for the town to pay 100% of the salary so they'd have money in the revolving fund to pay the contractor. So that's why we're here tonight. So, Chair, if, well, Chair recognizes Ed Thorne, town administrator. Um, Mr. Moderator, I concur with uh, Mike. Exactly what he mentioned is what the uh, Recreation Commission did. <laughs> and that there's sufficient money in a revolving account to fund that position. Chair recognizes Patrick okay, so Just point of order, I'm not exactly sure what we need to do. So to get that funded from the revolving account, do I need to amend the motion or do you need to vote no? Chair recognizes Steve Curley. Ms. Moderator, through you to the prior speaker. Um, to, uh, for them to use their revolving fund, they do not need town permission. They've already got the revolving fund. So if this is vote, voted down, they still have that option. 
Chair recognizes, I should know who you are, and the chair Susan apologizes. Roach. Susan Roach. Susan Roach. Yeah. Just for clarity, it has I mean, the Excuse me, Susan is director, recreation, director. recreation Director. Just for clarity, um, the gentleman that was doing the field maintenance as well as the part-time custodial job within the community center was unable to fulfill both those duties efficiently, which is why it was separated out again to a subcontractor. And he was moved from a part-time custodial to a full-time custodial, which means we're paying $30,000 for someone to maintain the fields, plus now an additional $20,000 to subsidize his part-time salary to now a full-time position. So I just want that clarity made. I understand the financial ramifications to the town, and I'm okay with it being done on a temporary basis, but I don't feel that the Recreation Commission with its self-funding program should be paying for a contract to do the community center. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none. Oh. After the fifth time, the chair will get it right. Dan Pelletier. Yes. Um, the chair recognizes Dan Pelletier. So if I'm reading this correctly, this person went full time in June? Correct. So we went full time without having the funding to pay for them to be full time? Or is this? Chair recognizes Ed Thorne. Yeah, the mo he was full time last uh, spring. And the money was appropriated from both recreation and the general fund. Um, as uh, Sue mentioned, and Mike also mentioned that there was a situation where they used another contractor. He is a full time employee. He is a union employee, and obviously we are recommending that the, the uh, difference in the salary be funded from the recreation revolving account. Right, so I guess to go a little bit Chair further. Chair recognizes if, if, Dan Pelletier. What's that? Oh, sorry. Um, so if this article is voted down and the rec commission decides not to fund it from their revolving account, are we gonna be asked in the spring to fund the shortfall? Chair recognizes Ed Thorne. Because we're funding it either way. I mean. Well, I think that as uh, under the town administrator bylaw um, and uh, obviously the potential town manager special act that's in front of the Senate right now, I think that that decision is going to be made by the town administrator. To fund it? Correct. Any further debate on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion made by Eric Hart from Recreation Commission requires a simple majority. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. I declare it lost. Do we have a score? Two, two. Two, two. Top of the third, two to two. <laughs> Arthur Boyle moves that the meeting be in recess. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye, oppose no, the ayes have it. Thank you very much for your patience, for showing up early, for staying and getting the job done.